This is EJ the Detail uh, Innovator. And I just wanted to go over with y'all right quick the type of buffers that I did I use. Okay, I started buffing uh, cars in our uh, 79 during the time when they was using what today called, uh, what you call the buffers? Rotary buffers is what they call them, rotary buffers. And the first buffer I used was a Milwaukee. The second buffer I used and I actually bought was a Makita buffer from a pawn shop. Okay, first thing I want to introduce you to is this particular Makita I got. I've had it maybe about seven years. This particular Makita buffer I got, if you look at it harder, you'll be able to tell that it's a newer Makita buffer. I've had it about a year. Okay, the addition that I added, which I heard a lot of talk about it, and I've seen a lot of YouTube videos where a lot of people went to dual action uh, buffers. Matter of fact, my job, the company I work for, had bought like five uh, uh, dual action buffers for the guys to use. I've never been one like playing uh, equipment with a bunch of other guys. So I eventually got this one. And since this one, I've had maybe eight months, I bought a brand new one made by Adam. And it's a, a 15 inch, well, 15 inch throw. And it's a dual action buffer. Then I got the uh, DA buffer. Now, from what I see on YouTube, about all the videos, all the videos of training, all the videos of uh, instructors showing, uh, giving demonstrations on how to uh, do paint correction. They're all using uh, the DA buffer with the finishing pad, the DA buffer with the uh, cutting pad, and they're using the uh, dual action buffer. It's, I very seldom see instructors teaching the newer detailers how to use what they call the rotary uh, buffer. The rotary buffer is steady for what I can see after 40 plus years in this game, in the automotive detail game, it's being pushed out, uh, out of the automotive detailing trade. It's like they're trying to phase it out, but in my honest opinion, you'll never be able to phase it out because first of all, it's certain things the DA ain't gonna be able to do. You know, I don't care what kind of cutting pad you put on it, what kind of cutting cream you use, uh, the DA is just not gonna be able to have enough torque to be able to penetrate paint that's in a uh, bad condition, right? Or uh, with bad scratches. Now, yeah, you could turn this DA over like I do sometimes when I'm using the DA with a DA cutting pad and cutting cream and I don't wanna switch to what they call the, uh, I keep forgetting the name because I'm not used to calling it that by the name, um, rotary buffer. I just press down harder on the DA to help give it more torque to turn. Um, now with this dual action buffer, I've done a, uh, a couple paint corrections with this uh, but I didn't use it by itself. What I did is I did the first step with what they call my rotary high speed buffer, which if I'd have had to walk, if I would have had black and decker, if I would have had, uh, um, what other buffer? The wall black and decker, if I'd have had, uh, Milwaukee, whatever form of high speed buffer I had, if I didn't have the Makita buffer, I would use what they call the, um, I keep forgetting the name again, but like I said, uh, it's like a downplay and disrespect to the high speed buffer with them calling it a rotary buffer. Okay, regardless of what rotary buffer I use, I would use this first with wool pad, cutting cream, then I would go with this. 
using a more, uh, um, DA cutting pad with cutting cream. I might switch the cutting cream up, but I would definitely switch uh, the buffers up. Uh, I would use this first, which is the rotary high speed. Then I would use the dual action buffer. To be honest with the dual action buffer, I could do another cut and I can use, switch the pads off this here and it would easily fit on this one and I could use this here to do a cut and a finishing with if I wanted to. So if I had to say what buffers are most important, even though they're concentrating more today, teaching the younger generation how to use the DA and the uh, dual action buffer, my personal opinion, if I wasn't gonna do all three, I would use the rotary and I would use the dual action. Now, if I was gonna use all three, I would use the rotary, the dual action, and the DA. Depends on how much money being spent and what, how many steps I would plan on uh, performing doing a paint correction. But in my mind, and it's proven to me over and over again through personal experience, I don't own another buffer that, uh, that actually do what I want when it comes down to trying to light scratches or remove scratches like the, uh, what they call the rotary buffer, the high speed. Now, I do have a palm sander, and if I wanted to, I could do some wet sanding, but I'm not in a, a predicament to be able to fix certain problems wet sanding if I made a mistake. So I stay away from wet sanding. So this is EJ, the automotive detailing innovator, signing out, peace.